So, Divi, we have the GM earnings, and uh, at least to my eye, they're pretty strong, pretty much across the board. You had a really strong fourth quarter, and you did all right in the year. What accounted for it? Sure, uh, David, it was a strong quarter and a strong year. Uh, $6.54 in EPS, 11.8 in EBIT adjusted, and 8% margins. And it was strength across the board um, in uh, most of our operating segments. North America was uh, uh, very strong as well with 10.2% uh, margins. Uh, Two billion of equity income in China for the year, despite the challenges we're facing, as well as the um, GM financial performance was uh, a record for the quarter as well and if you if you take a look at how um, how this uh, results came about a lot of it is really helped by a um uh, strength in our uh, new truck launch, which has gone exceptionally well. We delivered 75,000 of our light-duty trucks um, in the quarter, and they've been received really well, and they helped uh, from a volume, mix, and price perspective. And um, our crossovers, which we uh, launched in late uh, 2017, continue to perform really well. We have an intense focus on costs and um, execution, and you can you can see that flow through into um, in North American results. And um, I, I'd say, David, that all all of this really points to, in an environment where you see commodity challenges and foreign exchange challenges, the earnings resiliency of the company and our execution in this environment. Well, it's fascinating you point that out. I mean, because there, there were a lot of headwinds, uh, really, to all the auto industry. There's some softness in the market. As you say, input costs going up. There's some certainty over trade. And yet you seem to have weathered all that. How much of it was pricing? And if it was pricing, how much of that is mixed as a practical matter, particularly with the trucks and the crossovers you mentioned? Sure. So, from a let me uh, step back and um, uh, and give you the puts and takes here. From a headwind perspective, we faced over a billion dollars of commodity headwinds for the year, and uh, foreign exchange challenges of a similar magnitude in South America as well. But against that, we, what we're really seeing is from uh, volume. To your point on um, trucks, volume was um, um, up in the fourth quarter uh, with the rollout of our uh, of our new trucks, as well as um, pricing was a big factor and uh, we're continuing to see uh, discipline in our own pricing as well as uh, discipline from the perspective of sell down of the um, old trucks as well and um, um, cost element our material cost optimization played into that um, as well uh, so we put all that together um, we saw some pretty big challenges as I mentioned but we were able to offset that through execution so so take that analysis and apply it over to China which you mentioned as I understand you had some real softness in the number of units sold over Overall, the market over there was down for the first time in 10 years, and yet you sold a lot more Cadillacs, I think more than 17 percent up. Are you making up in price what you might be losing in volume? Yeah, I, I would say in China, if you take a step back, uh, fourth quarter uh, was a volatile quarter uh, for the entire industry. And uh, what we were faced with was, uh, in addition to the volume pressure, the normal pricing pressure that you see in China as well. But against that, um, as you point out, uh, Cadillac sales, uh, Cadillac performed really well, as well as our um, uh, cost efficiencies that I've talked about before. We continue to be intensely focused on uh, cost in China, and that helped for the quarter. And I I think it's important to note, if you look at our results for Q4 in China, there were aspects that were specific to that quarter. Because of our launch activity, our launch costs were elevated, and we took some production actions to right-size our inventory to make sure that we were positioned well for 2019 as well. And all of that flow, flowing into our Q4 results, that's that's what you uh, uh, see in the outcome for, uh, for China. And as we look at 2019, I think we are positioned well into um, the, the new launches that we're going to have. We have 20 new launches coming up in China, as well as continuing on the uh, Cadillac momentum um, to offset some of the pressures that we, that we might see in China. So uh, in 2018, uh, Mary Barra and General Motors announced a major restructuring plan, got a lot of attention. That has not taken effect for the most part yet, as I understand it. Will that take effect in 2019? I understand that you're going through some consultations, particularly with the unions and things. Yeah, the actions we announced in uh, November, uh, firstly, let me say, th these are difficult decisions to make, and we don't take them lightly because they, they impact our people, they impact uh, the
the communities in which we operate. But the the rationale we said at the time, and I'll, I'll reiterate now, it's really to set up the company for future and for long-term success. And those are the actions that we're uh, continuing to implement today. And this will happen over a, a period of time, uh, David, and uh, 2019 is an important year, 2020 is an important year as well. And the savings we've talked about, we expect to achieve them by the end of 2020. And uh, what you're seeing is the series of implementation measures we're taking uh, relative to the actions we announced in November. Uh, finally, we never want to talk without talking about electrification and about autonomous vehicles, the investment there through uh, crews and other things. Where are you on that? You're throwing up a lot of cash, I see, so you can afford to make the investment. You have some partners in Honda and in SoftBank. Where are you right now in your investment, and are you still on track to have a pilot out this year, that is in 2019? If you take a look at uh, what we're, what the, our approach to this, uh, we have made investments in our core business and um, uh, the trucks and crossovers that are positioning us well to um, uh, continue to generate profitability and the cash flow to fund our future businesses. And if you take um, a look at our, um, our uh, autonomous efforts or our electrification efforts, we have uh, been vocal about our vision for a uh, zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion world. And we're actively working on that. And um, our product development group is a perfect example where the actions we're taking is really to transform us and transform the resources that we're applying to the um, future of personal mobility. And uh, we're, uh, we're making uh, rapid progress on that. Um, and as it relates to autonomous, we will be gated by safety. Um, and uh, this is a, a huge uh, engineering challenge, as you're well aware. And uh, uh, what we're doing is within that to um, have an integrated approach, have it all under one roof, and make rapid uh, progress in, um, in um, developing these vehicles. And we'll have more to share when um, the time comes. And finally, finally, Divya, uh, it's not lost to me. In 2018, you said that Cadillac's going to be your lead in electrification, uh, a high-value proposition. That's a higher price point. And there seems to be a growing consensus that really, in niche, at least initially, that's where electrification is going to make sense as a business matter in some of the more luxury vehicles. If you can give us a time frame, just a general time frame, when will that become actually a profit maker as opposed to an investment for General Motors? I don't have anything specific to share from a profitability curve perspective, David, but we have said that we want our next generation of electric vehicles to be desirable, obtainable, and profitable, and with the right range, and that's what the entire team is working towards. And if you if you take a step back, it's not just about the cost curve and um, the uh, the rate of um, um, rate of decline in um, in um, uh, costs over uh, in electric vehicles. It's really more about the customer. What are their pain points, how do we alleviate those pain points, and making sure that our solutions, and we have an overall holistic solution to encourage adoption and remove those pain points as well. So we're looking at it more holistically, and we have shared that we have a number of entries coming between now and 2023. We're all actively working towards that, and we'll have more to, more to share later.